every time I come to the boat I forget something. Um, and uh, I've arrived at the boat and started... Oh, no. Arrived at the boat last night, uh, got up this morning, started sorting up my camera kit and I've left the SD card for my for the Sony at home. So I'm using the GoPro, so the footage isn't as brilliant as the, the Sony footage, but I hope it's okay. Hi everybody. Um, so, um, last week you will have noticed Nigel was here doing some awesome welding. He's coming back uh, in a week or two. Um, so today I've got uh, and I've sorted out the gun for the MIG welder and I've got a bunch of fabrication to do. It's slightly breezy at the minute outside but it's due to calm down to this afternoon and tomorrow looks like it's going to be really good. So I'm going to start today I think by hacking away at all that horrible old rusty stuff, nearly said a swear word, um, underneath the cockpit, all the, the rusty angle iron. Um, and the reason it's rusty, by the way, is because, obviously, steel boat, angle iron frames under there, and then the boards for the lazarettes are sat on the angle irons, and they're bolted through it with stainless nuts and bolts. Everything's, of course, painted and epoxied before it starts, but, obviously, once you get the bolts moving, the nuts and bolts moving in the holes, the paint flakes off, and then you, uh, the mild steel all goes rusty and over the years it degrades. So it's a kind of, it's a normal thing. I'm gonna construct it slightly differently, I think. I'm gonna try and come up with a clever solution to that. But first things first, let's get the big grinder out and um, start chopping. And talking about big grinders, now he's just given me this, one, an old um, nine inch grinder of his. Um, there's some cutting discs and some grinding discs. I, I've ordered one of these uh, to see how they are. I could do with more of these, but I've only ordered one for now because they're flipping expensive. A nine inch flap wheel and some nine inch sanding discs because uh, I've got a backing plate for it. Um, so I'm gonna have a crack with that. I need to move some of those tools though first. I've cleared some tools, I've made some space, taken down this temporary bulkhead that's going to be the steps this net down, isn't it? Let's have a look at what we're actually going to chop away. All of this, this is our new bridge deck, and I want to chop away everything underneath this. So this was the old step support. Um, these verticals here I think can come off, um, and I'm going to cut down this all level so there's no sharp edges. Flipping it. That took me about three hours to chop that out. And I'm not even halfway done what I need to do yet. Um, there's a lot more left to do. But that huge chunk there has come out. So we've now got loads more room, loads more room in this aft cabin stroke lazarette thing which will split and you can get a much clearer view now of the rotten angle irons that I'm going to cut out as well. I think before I cut them out though I think what I want to do is finish this weld round from the inside uh, or, or you know weld it up on the inside uh, to give it some extra strength, extra beef and, uh, and I might even weld in a new support before I cut the old ones out just to stop anything like 
Poing. Wow. This is hard, hot, sweaty, dirty work. As I'm sure you can tell by my face, I'm wearing as much PPE as I can. I've got my welding mask on, gloves and everything else. I've got burns on my legs. I'm, I'm sitting under there with a fire blanket across my lap because often I'm welding over my own legs and the sparks are falling on my legs and going straight through my overalls. because So I've got a fire blanket doubled up over my legs, but all the same, the odd one gets through. What I want to do now is weld a piece of angle across the new uh, companion way so that I can then make some temporary steps because now that is dangerous. And if Melissa and Jack do come here with me next time, uh, that's gonna be potentially hazardous. So I need to make some, uh, strengthen that up and at least make some sort of ladder to go up and down, which uh, Jack and Melissa can manage without falling head over heels, which I'm sure they wouldn't because they're both very capable, but I'd feel awful if they did. So I'll go and get a piece of angle, eh? I've got my piece of angle. I'm going to clamp it. Uh, sorry, I'm going to clamp it and weld it, but I've just got to clean up where I'm going to weld it to first. This is my idea for some temporary steps because um, we've got to see what works in terms of stepping up out the companion way. So I've got these two here and then the steps themselves will go between them. There's some wibbly wobbly steps. I haven't glued them or screwed them yet. Um, that's the basic idea, so that this panel here will latch into the piece of angle, that panel there will latch into the sole board so they won't move. I'm going to glue and screw them together and I'm going to wash my face and have a cup of tea. I've done loads of welding, mostly on the other side because I did this side several weeks ago if you remember. Um, but there's one patch just here which is where there was a hinge. None of that will be visible because it will have insulation and cladding and wood and timber and all kinds of stuff covering it up. But I need to cut that patch out. Here's a hole in the boat. There is a hole in the boat. And that hole is where one of the hinges was for the old lift up seats. And I thought I'd get away with it, but I didn't. Um, there's my new patch. That's going in. Um, so I'm just going to have to jiggery pokery. I've got some magnets. Um, people who say, oh, you should use magnets to hold in place. And I've got some, but they're pretty rubbish, to be honest. I don't know if it's just my magnets are terrible, but I find them about as useful as a chocolate teapot. Um, barely got enough energy to pull the skin off a rice pudding. So um, maybe I just need some better magnets. But for now, I'm just going to wedge it in place somehow. <laughs> So it's a few days later and I'm back on the boat and Melissa is here and Jack is here. Shout hello, Jack. Hiya. <laughs> We've been hearing. So some of you may notice that I've been AWOL. I haven't been here for a while. Um, I've had lots of stuff that I've been doing at home and I've also been working on my day skipper um, and I'm doing my final, my final exam. Um, I've just got a couple of things that I need to do and then I'm done. Now I just turned up, which is fantastic. And we're going to be doing chain plates, but we're doing the finishing off the bathing platform work first. Last time Nigel was here, we started welding on the bathing platform lid. So we're going to finish that weld uh, and we're going to be making new chain plates. That's one of the old ones, you'll see.
saying? How are you getting on? Uh, yeah, good. Um, as we, we we knew that this area was quite badly rusted and it's not it's not um, it's not enjoyable to weld. Let's put it no. That way. But we are. I mean, obviously, we want to cut this lip off, don't we? So we yes. Can, yes. A smooth run for water to run off. Yeah. Um, and that's because that the the original top was an 18 mil ply top, and we've taken the 18 mil plywood top off and we've put on three mil steel. Uh, four mil steel. So what what I'm thinking is. I'm able to get a root weld in there, so we'll get a root weld in there to seal this so we're not getting water in. Correct, yeah. And then at a later date, we'll cut this trim off. Yeah. Then put another weld in to, f to backfill where we've cut this off. Yeah. And then grind it in nice to give us a nice rounded... Spot on. Nice rounded edge. Because otherwise, if we try and do that today, um, because we want to get on with the chain plates as well, don't we? Yeah. So if we can get this sealed up, I think that's that's the way to go if you're happy with that. Absolutely. There is a drain hole down in the bottom of there. Is it worth welding the drain hole up? Just a, a, a drill hole that I drilled to let the water out of the sugar scoop. Should we weld that up today or should we leave that till another I time? I that to drain until because you're not going to be sick of flexing the, the top panel. No, 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 no. There is no. still going to be some water getting in there. So of course I'll leave there is. For now. Yeah. Uh, okay, good. Well, this will be, I mean, as of water getting in, it'll be, it'll be minute amounts, not like it was. No, that's it. Um, so while Nigel's busy welding up the bathing platform lid, I'm drilling holes in bits of stainless, which are going to be cut down for our new chain plates. Pins will go through. This is just an old toggle that I'm using to size it up. But yeah, I'm going to drill these out and then we can cut them down to the correct lengths for our new chain plates. So the bathing platform welding is done. We've still got to cut that lip off uh, so that the water runs off it, that can happen another time. What we're doing now is looking at these chain plates. Let me show you the old chain plates and what we're going to be doing about them. Over to Nige. So the old chain plates coming through from the roof and welded into the actual steel frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it from the top and a slot down so that the chain plates come in and then we can weld down here, they won't be this long, and along the bottom, yeah. going through. So what we need to do is, I think, we're going to get a slitter disc and take this old weld off here first so we've got a smooth corner. Then when we cut the slit from the top, we've got a nice, and it, we want it to come through nice and sit, sit against, flush against there, the old one. Yeah. And then weld this to the old to the old one, a bit really nice weld around there, it around will. there, around the top. Yeah. The weld's cut back and the plate's all ground out, so now what we've got to do is grind the weld off at the top and drill some holes and cut a slot for the new chain plate to go in. You can actually see the line, there's your plate. Can you see the line where the weld, because now I've gone past where the weld was fused through. Yes. That's weld, so we now know where to drill. That's yeah. That's our line there. Two holes. like that that's a new chain plate the welding rods that we're using then are a 312 uh, dissimilar metal rod uh, can you please explain that Nigel yeah these are formulated to weld mild steel and stainless steel together dissimilar metals yeah um, it also works with mild steel and hardened steels specially formulated where the, the actual weld joint sort of blends between the two right um, but anybody who's ever, I don't know if you've ever had, you know, a lot of people have the stick welders and, and do little bits of hobby, but all the information you need is actually on this label. Yeah. Um, including all these arrows here tell you which directions, and these are multi-direction. Oh, wow. It says you can do fillets, overhead fillets, vertical up, vertical down. Um, so if you look at that diagram there, it's quite small. Yeah. Well, that'll tell you what... Um, what directions you can go in. It'll also tell you what amps 
you can, uh, you know, ideally you can weld that. Now these are 3.2s, so it's recommending 110 amps. Got you. So if you ever wondered, oh, what should I have my welder set at? It says it, so on, the it, says it on the packet. Most times they'll say between this and this. This just gives us an ideal. So you can go plus or minus that. Yes. But I've set it to 110, what they've recommended, and we'll right. see how we go. Yeah. There we are, a nice, neat weld. Lovely. So there's our chain plate from the outside. What's that, one down, eight to go? One down, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to go, yeah. One down, eight to go. <laughs> and that actually didn't take us long, did it, really? It what, not 15 all. minutes all, all in all? Yeah. If it I weren't for so. film, filming, it would have been 15 minutes? I think so, yeah, something like that. Beautiful. Two down. Two down. Seven to go. Seven to go. Well, thanks very much again, Nigel, for your help. It's my pleasure. Shall we have a brew and then uh, call oh, it yeah. a day for today? That's what makes it worthwhile. Nice cup of tea. Um, so I've been doing my um, day skipper theory online um, just to make it easier so I can do it at my own pace. I've um, been using a company called Urban Truant, we're not sponsored by them, but um, if you want to have a look at their website we'll drop the link in the description because it's, it's really good that you can sort of sit down in the evening and do um, your theory and then do your tests and stuff online. Right, so we're nearly at the end of the episode, don't go away just for a minute though because I'm coming back to uh, the board of jobs which we've not done for a little while so let me just go through there's a fair bit to catch up on bowsprit this is the bowsprit column finish the bowsprit fabrication goes into doing four deck chain plates we have done two of the chain plates on the starboard side of the coach roof today so that goes into doing build the bridge deck did that a couple of weeks ago that's done actually. Swim platform, we've uh, we've actually done the swim platform. We've not epoxy, uh, we've not painted it. Weld the inside of the transom and swim platform, done. Weld in the new swim platform, that's done. That's a whole load of jobs that have been done or doing. Yeah, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it, but it's actually quite a lot. So we just wanted to take this opportunity to say a quick thank you to everyone that has helped us, especially Nigel uh, with the welding. Um, everyone, uh, our patrons, thank you so much. We really appreciate your support. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you did want to become a patron, by the way, uh, there is a link in the description. We don't mention it very often and we don't kind of put the 
the patron logo all over our YouTube. We occasionally put supported by patrons, which we're really grateful for. But if you did want to become a patron, the link's in the description as always. Um, but we're not forcing you to. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we're not forcing Certainly you to. Um, yeah, and people that have bought stuff off our Amazon wish list and a very generous person that sent some money to Pro Marine Store. Yes. Um, which is great. And all that kind of stuff. And sub subscribers and people that do likes and comments. We just wanted to say that we really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, we, we do work quite a bit with Pro Marine Store. Again, we're not sponsored by them, but we tend to get a lot of our bits and pieces through them. And one of our amazing followers rang them up and donated some money to Pro Marine Store, which... Uh, Pro so we Marine can Store, go shopping. Pro Marine, Store, <laughs> Pro Marine, Pro Marine Store. Uh, but it means that, yeah, Melissa was able to buy uh, an amazing life jacket to do her... Uh, which she needs a modern one to do her yeah, day skipper practical which is next week mine didn't have a light so yeah. um thank you um really important stuff yeah so thanks very much again for watching guys uh we hope you've enjoyed the episode and yeah. we'll see you next time we are now back to weekly videos as you've probably yes. noticed we had a couple of weeks there where we were doing kind of fortnightly videos while i was still poorly uh, but i'm all recovered now so yeah. uh, we're and back me and to jack week. should be back a bit more i've got a couple of weeks away sailing um, yeah. so hopefully that'll be coming up in a future episode yeah some exciting sailing stuff coming up thanks again for watching see you later guys bye, bye.